So in this video, we're going to look at the Hall Effect. And the Hall Effect is really interesting because you can use it to figure out the flow of anything that has free charges in it. All right? And there's a whole bunch of other applications of it. So let me draw an example of what I'm talking about. So I have a current. And it's going to go through this conductor, right? And this conductor is in a magnetic field where the field lines are pointing into the page from your perspective, right? And this uh, conductor has a width D. So I'm going to use negative charges, right? So if I have a negative charge here, as it moves through here, right? If you look at the force that's going to be created on this moving charge, right? I have an electron, left-hand rule, right? Because it's opposite for negative charges. So I take my left hand and... Field lines into the page, velocity this way, so you should see that the force on it is going to point downwards. So there's going to be a magnetic force that points downwards. Okay, so what's going to happen is these negative charges, when they come in, they're going to get pushed down and they're going to start traveling this way. They're going to get shoved down to the bottom. Well, if you shove negative charges down to the other side, right? That's going to set up an electric field because you have this separation of charge, right? So if I move all the negatives down here, you're going to be left with positive on the top. So I'll end up with negative charges down here, and I'll have positive up here, and that sets up an electric field, right? So now I have this electric field in this conductor. So these electrons moving through, they get pushed down to the bottom by this magnetic force, but now there's an electric field, so now there's going to be an electric force. So here's my electron, right? I have a magnetic force pointing down, and now there's going to be an electric force pointing up because electrons go opposite field lines, right? So the positive points down here, but an electron is going to get pushed this way. So eventually these two forces are going to cancel each other out, and this electron is going to travel, right? But it's moved, and it's in this, this cross field, right, where these forces are canceling each other out. So... You stick a voltmeter across this, this is going to give you what's called the Hall voltage or the Hall EMF. And this potential difference tells you a whole bunch of stuff about this, right? And so let's see why. So let's set these two equations, these two forces equal to each other. So my magnetic force is equal to my electric force, right? And so now substitute in, I know that magnetic force is QVB, and I know that electric force is charge times electric field. Well, Q cancels out. And so I get that uh, E, right, this could be my Hall electric field, is equal to the velocity times the magnetic field, right? So, I mean, that's nice and all, but let's make it useful to where this voltage means something, okay? So if you remember, uh, voltage equals electric field times distance, right, or I should say potential difference. So if I take V equals ED and I solve for E, that gives me voltage over distance equals E. If I take this and I plug it in for this, now I have voltage over distance equals velocity times magnetic field. All right, so now let's solve for voltage because that's the voltage here. So your Hall voltage, or sometimes you'll see it called the Hall EMF, is going to be equal to V your magnetic field times the distance between the two, uh, the, dis the distance of separation of the charges times the velocity. And in this case, right, because I'm talking about moving charges, this is the drift velocity. But if you're talking about something like we're going to do an example in another video, um, if this is like blood flow or something like that, then this is the velocity of the flowing blood, right? And so you can use this for a whole bunch of cool stuff, right? So you can take this and you can figure out like how fast, like I was telling you, blood flowing in a capillary or something. You can use a probe, right, because blood has free ions in it. You can apply a magnetic field across it. You can measure the voltage, and you can see how fast that's moving, right? You can take it, and you can figure out a whole bunch of different stuff. They use it in circuits. Like, have you ever heard of a Hall effect probe, right? It's the same thing. You're basically using this effect to figure out one of these variables, right? But the cool thing is... This shows us what the charge of the charge carrier inside a current is, right? So remember, like, back in the whenever 1800s, 1700s, when Ben Franklin was figuring this out, and he screwed up, and he called the charge carriers positive. In reality, now we know it's negative, right? We say uh, a negative charge flowing this way is the same thing as conventional current, which is positive flowing this way. So what I mean is, if I have a wire, right, and I say the current is flowing this way, 
I'm saying that there's positive charges flowing this way. But in reality, we know that it's negative charges flowing this way. And so we just use them interchangeably, right? And we're like, oh, whatever, it works. But the Hall effect shows us that it has to be the negative charges, right? So if you set this up and you push electrons this way, you'll measure a Hall voltage. If I plug it like this, I'll measure a Hall voltage that's positive like this, right? My positive is here, my negative is down here. But let's imagine I did it with a positive, right? So conventional current is opposite that, right? So let's pretend... I took some positive charges and I did this way, right? So that should be the opposite of putting negatives this way. If conventional current and real current are just backwards, then I should see the same thing, right? Well, let's try it. So if I take a positive charge and I go this way, run my current this way, do your right-hand rule and figure out which way this charge is going to go when it enters this field that's into the page. So pause the video, try it. So if your field lines are pointing into the page and I'm going to use my right hand rule right field lines into the page velocity is pointing this way and my force is down but wait a minute right if this magnetic force is down that means that I should see positive charges moving down here right and so when I go and measure this voltage I should see positive down here and negative up here but in reality when I do it when I measure this voltage I see the positive up here and the negative down here Right? So what gives? Right? These two aren't the same. And what that shows us is when we do it and we actually measure and we actually see that positive is on the top and negative is on the bottom, that means that it must be negative charges that carry the current, right? that carry the charge in the current. And so that's kind of one of the pieces of evidence that showed us that it's actually electrons that move and carry charge instead of the proton. So Hall effect, really, really super cool, useful stuff, right? The equation is pretty simple, right? You're just saying that the EMF or the voltage, right? However you define it is equal to the magnetic field times the distance of separation of the charge times the velocity. And so if you're doing a circuit, it's the drift velocity, or if you're using a problem like blood flow or something like that, it's the velocity of that flowing. But solving it is pretty simple.